In this video, we're going to look at uploading files in Next.js 13 using several actions. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Hamed. I'm a full stack web developer. And here in this channel, we talk about modern web dev topics like React and Next.js. So let's get into this. We're going to build on top of a project we created together on the channel where we used React drop zone to create this drag and drop area. So users can drag and drop files over here. And once they do, we're going to show them a preview. If the file is accepted in terms of the file size or type, we're going to quickly look at the settings and we're going to reject them if it is, for example, if I drag and drop a big file over here, it is rejecting that file that I just dropped with an error that says it's actually bigger or larger than one megabyte. Now for that package or project, we used React Drop Zone. Um, that project was using Next.js 12 pages directory, but uh, the setup for the React Drop Zone and the APIs and the hooks are identical to this project. I will review what we're doing from a high level, but if you want to dive deeper into how to set this up, uh, you can actually watch that video. I'm going to include a, a link in the cart somewhere. In this video, we're going to build on top of it uh, and it actually comes where we want to upload to Cloudinary. Now, Cloudinary is a cloud storage service for your images and we're going to use a signed or authorized URL or upload to Cloudinary and we're going to perform that using server actions from our backend. Uh, so I'm going to explain how we're going to do that. Um, but if you wanted to start from before we get to this point, you can watch that video. Okay. Let's just jump into our project over here. So I created a Next.js project by running pnpx create next app with the latest flag. This is not using TypeScript. It is using JavaScript and it's set up already to work with Tailwind CSS. I'm going to include a link to the source code so you can follow along while we're building this together. Now, I've already created this project, so I'm going to walk over the code and actually what I have done instead of writing the code from scratch. So now inside the app folder, we have the layout. This is the outermost layout or the root layout of our application. I haven't done anything to this. This is what comes out of the box when you run create next app. Now let's jump into the page. This is a React server component that represents our home page or our index page. Let me just close this off. So all we're doing over here is rendering this H1 that says upload files and then this custom drop zone component that I have created. So let's just dive into this drop zone component and see what we're doing over here. So from a high level, what this is doing, let me just close this off so we're not distracted with these functions. I'm going to explain what these do, but from a high level, what this is doing is this is rendering a form and this form is rendering this input and this uh, div area, which allows a user to drag and drop files. This is coming from the React drop zone package. And then down here, we have a preview section where we have some accepted files and then some rejected files down there based on the criteria that we would define together. Now the way React Drop Zone works is that it will give you this use drop zone hook that you will call inside of your component. And to be able to use this type of hooks, we have to run them inside a client component. Therefore, we have that use client directive up top to instruct Next.js that this is a client component because by default, every component page or layout inside your app router is a React server component. Now this is going to give you some helper functions that you can just call and a spread over the div that you want it to be the drag area and also over an input where you want to have an input type file. Now you can pass some settings to this use drop zone hook. For example, I have said that I only want to accept images, but any type of images, I have defined a maximum size of one megabyte and a maximum file of one. So I'm not allowing multiple files, but only one file. It will be the same way if you're also working with multiple files, but because we have to loop through the files and then upload them one by one to Cloudinary, I'm just working with one file, but you can just go ahead and have as many files as you want. The logic will be the same. Now for this on drop, this is uh, what happens when we actually, or the user actually drops some files. So we have created this function using the use callback hook from React. So we are not recreating this function. We get the accepted files and rejected files based on our criteria. 
and what I'm doing here is that I'm holding this files and rejected files in local state react state and what I'm doing here is that I'm getting uh, the accepted files I am mapping over them and for each one I'm creating a preview URL so that it allows me to actually uh, preview them in, in inside these accepted files so at this point uh, when the user drops a file and we show them a preview we haven't uploaded anything to Cloudinary or to our backend it's just using the browser API to show a preview so that's what we're doing inside here and this line over here if, if you're allowing multiple files you don't want to overwrite the previous files so you can just extend the previous files but because I'm using only um, one file so I have commented that out that you can bring it back on if you wanted to have more than one file and I'm doing uh, something similar with the rejected files we're not going to have any preview for the rejected files I'm just holding them in state so I can have them down there and show the error and allow the user to actually remove those files so that's the on drop function the rest of this actually is helper functions that we can use to remove a single file all the files or the rejected files now what's interesting here or uh, is us building on top of the project we previously had is what's happening when this form is submitted now in that previous project we had an unsubmit handler attached to this form where we would prevent the default behavior of the browser read the file that was selected and then use Cloudinary uh, preset uploads to upload that file to Cloudinary and get a URL back now in that video I used an unsigned or an unauthorized way of uploading images to Cloudinary which is done through presets uh, so look at that video if you're interested in that but in now in this video we're going to make an authenticated or signed request to Cloudinary so it's more secure plus that we're using actions instead of submit handlers inside react so let's dive into this action function that I've passed into the action prop of this form if you're not familiar with server actions and how they work I do have a video on the channel where I dive deeper into server actions and data mutation in Next.js 13 I'm going to link it somewhere in the card so you can watch that and then come back in here but, be but basically we would define functions that we pass into the action prop of a form these functions are going to perform mutation or they're going to perform an action on the server or on the client using server actions so let me explain from a high level what we're trying to do here and then we'll look at the implementation now when we are trying to make a signed or authenticated request to Cloudinary the first step is to create a signature now a signature needs to be created on your server side because you need to have access to your secret key now with Cloudinary you have a cloud name you have an API key and you do have an API secret the cloud name and API key can be exposed to your front end as we we're going to see in a second but your secret key needs to stay on the server so the first step is to create a signature so once we have that signature we're going to make a post request to Cloudinary from the client side using that signature to actually upload our file and once that's done we get the public ID back we're going to verify that public ID with our signature again inside of our backend before saving that URL or public ID to our database okay let's now actually dive deeper into these functions and see what we're doing over here first thing we're getting the first file inside of our files estate this is the accepted files that came back from react drop zone so I'm getting the first one out if there is no file I'm returning obviously we don't want to upload if there is no file and if there is a file the first thing that we need to do as I explained is to get a signature from Cloudinary for that I have defined a server action called get signature that I'm calling to give me a signature that I can then use to upload let's actually look at this function so the convention for server actions is uh, you would create an underscore actions JS inside of your app folder and underscore makes this file private so it takes it out of your routes and segments uh, a convention to use to organize your actions you could use this use server uh, directive up top to instruct Next.js that these functions are only meant to run on the server and then you can include all of your server actions like this get signature or this save to database uh, in one file so let's look at this get signature and then we're going to look at that one later 
So for this, we're going to import Cloudinary. So you have to install the Cloudinary Node.js SDK. This is going to allow you to actually create a signature. So we're going to set the config for our Cloudinary with our cloud name, uh, API key, API secret, and secure, which is um, only making this uh, Cloudinary to work over HTTPS. So I have included a .env.example, and these are the environment variables you need to set. This is the upload URL. You're going to use this um, from the client side when you wanted to actually upload. You're going to bring in your cloud name, API key, and API secret. Now, uh, the cloud name and API key uh, are allowed to be exposed to the front end or client side of your application. That's why I have prefixed them with next public but your API secret needs to stay in your backend. That's why I've mentioned secret here and public there. And you can get them from your Cloudinary dashboard. Again, if you are not uh, fully familiar with Cloudinary, watch that video that I talk about React Drop Zone. In there, I show Cloudinary dashboard and how you can uh, get these values, bring them here into your local environment. So you can set the config over here once you get this Cloudinary SDK. So this is now uh, configured to work with your specific cl cloud. Now inside this get signature server action, we're creating a timestamp, which is now, and we're going to call this API sign request, and we're going to pass in our timestamp. I, I have also included a folder because I wanna save these images that users upload to a specific folder called next inside my Cloudinary account. And then as the next or second argument, I'm going to pass in my API secret. This is going to give me a signature back. I'm going to also include this timestamp. And I'm going to return this back to my um, front end. Here, I'm getting this timestamp and this signature out of this get signature function. And what I'm doing is that I'm creating a new form data. I'm appending this specific file that I had. Now the other stuff that you need to append to this form data is your API key. Again, I'm using next public Cloudinary API key. This is why we prefix them with next public because we need to use them inside of our client side. Remember, this is a client side component. Your API key again and cloud name are safe to be on the client side, but never expose your API secret key. Now we're going to also append this signature that we got back from our backend. We're going to also include the timestamp and also this folder that I want this specific files or uploads to be saved inside my Cloudinary account. Now, again, we had this upload URL, which is also coming from our .env. This is going to be uh, the API endpoint for Cloudinary. You'd have to paste in your cloud name over here. Uh, this is going to allow you to upload only images to your account. So I'm going to make a post request to that endpoint and the body would be this form data we created over here. And once this is done and the image is uploaded to Cloudinary, this is going to give me back some data, including a signature, a version, and a public ID, a secure URL to actually access that specific image. Now, the last step before we actually save this data to our database is to verify this information coming from the client side. So I have this save to database server action. I'm going to pass in the version signature and the public ID. The public ID is the public ID of this specific image. You can access it through a secure URL. But before I save this to my database, I want to confirm or verify that this is actually coming from Cloudinary. So inside this save to database, as you can see over here, what I'm doing is that I am getting this public ID that the client side application or user is sending me and the version. And I'm going to sign this again with my API secret. And then I'm going to compare this expected signature that I just got out of signing this, these two values with my API secret with the signature that the client side or the user has sent me in this actually function call. So they're going to send the signature, the version and public ID. I'm going to sign the version and public ID with my secret that the user doesn't have access to 
and then I'm going to compare whatever I get that signature to this signature they're also sending so that I can verify that this is actually coming from our Cloudinary account once this expected signature is equal to the signature that the user is claiming uh, to be the signature I can go ahead and safely write this to the database now to test this out if I now go ahead and refresh this I'm going to go ahead and actually drop this image again we can see this image down there and if I hit the upload cloudinary button and if I open the console over here you can see in the back end I'm logging this public ID this is just logging it down there and if I go to my cloudinary dashboard and refresh we should be able to see this image now uploaded to the next folder inside of our cloudinary account now the benefit of using a signed or authenticated request to cloudinary is that users won't be able to upload images to your account without a signature that's actually created inside your backend so they don't have access to this functionality on the client side and also inside this get signature you can implement any other check that you want you can check the session inside this get signature and only create this signature if the user is logged in now let's quickly contrast this with how we would do it in Next.js 12 or Pages directory or without server actions. So up here, when we're calling this get signature, this is actually replacing an API call. So if this server action didn't exist, we would have to create an API endpoint for generating these signatures. From here, we should have just called that endpoint, get that signature, make, make this upload using that signature. And then down here for saving this actually to the database, we would have created another endpoint to actually verify and save the data to our database. So we have eliminated the need to create two different API endpoints to get a signature or to save the image actually to our database and replace them with these two server actions, which are just two functions that run on the server and you can call them from your client side. That's a wrap for this video, folks. We looked at uploading files in Next.js 13 using server actions, Cloudinary signed and authenticated requests, and React drop zone. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. If you're interested in learning Next.js, I do have a course. The link is in the description. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.